Hi, I'm Edwin Finch, and I will be teaching you essential programming concepts. Before you commit to the whole video, this is a warning that this is just a conceptual video. If you understand all the concepts on screen now, move on to the next video. We are not going to be covering any real code. This video is for absolute beginners who do not understand these essential programming concepts. That was part of my semester of calculus. Now, if you've ever done any algebra before, you've probably heard of variables. They're usually something like x equals 42. Boring, right? Well, you might not have heard of variables in terms of programming, so that's what I'm going to show you. They get a lot more exciting than x equals 42, trust me. It's quite the mess around here with these papers, but it's been more of a mess with all the boxes I've had to pack. This isn't the first time I've moved, but it's definitely been the most exciting because I've been thinking of the boxes I've been packing as variables. So let me show you how that works. So here are a few of my sweetly packed boxes, also known as variables. Now how do boxes act like variables? Well, when we pack a box, we give it a name so we know it's on the inside of it. That's exactly what we do with variables. We give them a human readable name, also known as an identifier. Now, with boxes, you can take stuff out, you put stuff back in, you can modify it. That's what we can do with variables. We can change their values. So we have this variable here. I know it's black on green. Tutorial vidnum. We're going to access this one. We find that it's 42. Now, that doesn't make very much sense because this is your first video. So what we can do is we can modify it. See the answer to life here? We're going to assign it the value of 42. And just like that, answer to life became the value of 42. Just like the contents of a box change depending on what you put in it. It's as simple as that. So I've given you only number examples. Now that's not very exciting, is it? So in real life, in boxes, we put different types of objects. Maybe in this box I would put shirts, maybe in this box I put toys. And that's exactly what we do with variables. We separate them based on type. So this box is now a character, and this box is now an integer. That means the contents of the boxes, the contents of the variables, are different based on this type. So this one, my name is set to Edwin. And this is an integer. It's still the answer to life, which is still 42. And that's basically all there is to it. With data types, you can assign different types of variables, variables that do different things. You might put shirts in this box for a variable. You might put toys in this box. That's it. If, else, if, and else statements. So you're driving a car, and it starts raining. And if it starts raining, you turn on the windshield wipers. If it gets more intense, you turn them up higher. Now, this is the perfect example for exactly how if, else, if, and else statements work in programming. I have my brother here to be the rain. So you can see, if it starts raining, we're going to turn on the windshield wipers. It's going to go slow. Right? Only once in a while. But then, the rain starts to turn up. It goes really fast. And you turn up your windshield wipers really fast. That is an else if statement. The rain's getting too spooky for me. Alright, I'm driving fast. The rain stops. Else, you turn your windshield wipers off. It's as simple as that. Loops, 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 loops. Okay, now I bet you thought earlier that I couldn't look any stupider. But here I am running around in loops in my backyard holding my Mac and my mic. See, I'm doing these loops over and over and over again because that's the next concept we're going to be showing you in programming. See, loops allow you to do the same thing over and over and over again. And there are a few kinds of loops you can use. But they're less exhilarating then running around like a buffoon 
in your backyard. You see, I'm on the ground because this is where you do push-ups. And push-ups are a really good example of how what's called a while loop works in programming. So maybe you're not doing a set number of push-ups. Maybe you're pushing yourself to do push-ups while you're not tired and while you can keep yourself up. That's exactly how it works in programming. The loop runs while the condition that you state is true. So it loops over and over and over and over again until that condition breaks. So in real life, with push-ups, you would be pushing up and down, up and down until you're too tired or until you just can't hold yourself anymore. So we're getting back into the calculus, but don't worry, we're not doing any. We're just cleaning it up. See, I made quite the mess here. And for each of these papers, I'm going to have to decide whether or not I want to keep them. And that's a good example of how a for loop works in programming. See, a for loop allows you to run the loop for a certain amount of times. So for example, I have five papers here. For each one, I'm going to loop through and complete a task with it. I'm going to do something inside of that task, inside of the loop. So with each one, I'm going to choose to either dispose of it or keep it. So we're going to loop by the first index, zero. For this one, we're going to dispose. For it loops again, we're going to choose to dispose. And of course, this, there's logic inside of this loop. The next one goes, the next one we keep. We loop this until we're done, we're out, we have nothing else to run through. The loop breaks and we continue on. Let's get funky with some functions. <clears throat> now I see why my mom always said, don't put that grocery bag on your head, Edwin. Because after 18 takes of that intro, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling pretty lightheaded. But those grocery bags, okay, grocery shopping is what we're gonna be doing today. Now, what does grocery shopping have to do with programming? Well, I'm gonna be using it to demonstrate to you how functions in programming work. See, functions in programming allow you to execute a block of code over and over again. So you don't have to copy and paste the code everywhere and change it depending on what's going on. So on our grocery run, we have two things we can buy. We have other items, which are $2 a piece, and we have chocolate items, which are $3 a piece. We're feeling too lightheaded after all those intro takes, and we want a function to do the work for us. So luckily we have a function called grocery cost, which we can call to dynamically get the cost of all of our groceries, depending on what we're buying. So let's see here, I'm feeling like some dill pickle chips. That's one item. And I think we're gonna have a few smokes after. Just Popeye smokes though. So those are two other items we're having. And let's have a couple chocolate items. I'm feeling like some good old Swiss chocolate and some classic Canadian Mr. Biggs. So we're gonna input these into our function. Our parameters are what they're called and it's gonna output the result of 10. And that's it. Functions just do the work of a task for you over and over again so that you don't have to copy and paste the code everywhere. Awesome, right? APIs. Welcome to my super advanced recording studio. We have a program here and you don't have to worry about the syntax. We'll deal with that in a later tutorial. All you have to worry about is where is our beloved grocery cost function? We already have one for the grocery count and we already have one for whether or not the store is open, but we don't have a grocery cost function. And I think it would probably take me a long time to write with the lightheaded mind. So I'm gonna look around and see if there's an API for it. And API stands for Application Programming Interface. Sounds complicated, right? Well, this is basically all an API is. Take a function somebody else has written, and you add it onto your program. You've now implemented their API. You can use whatever they've exposed in their API to your advantage. And that's the basics. Hey, you made it through the overview video. Good job. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.